thank you very much. Um, I'm going to present some uh, of the concepts, algorithms, and um, mechanisms we have developed um, through the Omega project in WP5, which has uh, been dedicated to the Intermec. And I'm going to here to present the results on behalf of the work package files. So this is the outline of my talk. Um, after a short introduction, I will uh, address the network topology of the Omega network. And then I will present um, the reference architecture which has been developed during the project. Uh, additionally, um, we have defined an additional um, header, and I will explain the packet encapsulation when uh, data is going through the protocol stack in an Omega network. After that, I will shortly address some of the concepts, algorithms, and mechanisms we have developed and explain them more into detail because maybe you have seen the, the demonstration in the showrooms already and may be interested in some of the concepts. And this may, be, may answer some questions. Finally, I will present um, the reference implementation um, we have made during Omega and this has, which has already been introduced by Professor Kremer in the morning. And I will conclude my talk and give a short outlook on future research. So, when we started with the project, we started, of course, um, with a certain situation. And I, I think, um, as Omega is a tough research project, we still have the same situation somehow. And this is today's situation. And I will describe it as a four, four dimensions of home networking. And um, first of all, there are the devices. We have uh, several devices, uh, which are digital cameras, laptops, smartphones, um, office equipment, but there are also other devices, maybe considering home automation, we have intelligent home appliances or a window blinds which we want to control. There's a large uh, variety of, of uh, devices with multiple interfaces maybe. If you look at your smartphone, you have multiple interfaces. The next dimension, of course, comes along with the broadband access. There are offers like Triple Play or Quadruple Play, already available by the operators. Um, there's Fiber to the Home, EX, ESL, all these um, technologies which bring a large bandwidth or throughput to our homes. The third dimension are services and applications. So we have 3D TV, very demanding application, uh, as a buzzword, ambient assisted living maybe, home office, or energy efficiency, home automation, all this stuff. And of course, we do, not, uh, we do not have to forget the user in the end. There are some user, user paradigms. For example, um, it should be easy to use. He wants some applications or services like follow me within the home and uh, access anytime and anywhere of my uh, services and applications and content. And um, what engineers sometimes have to, uh, to, uh, to learn is that uh, services do matter and the applications the end customer sees and not really the technologies, and this is what the end customer, from my point of view, wants in the end. He doesn't want to serve technology, he just wants to use his services and his applications within his home. It doesn't matter how it works. So, in the end, all these uh, four dimensions have to converge somehow into one home network. So just to wrap up, we have a pervasive broadband access many different digital devices and equipped with multiple interfaces. So this is a really heterogeneous uh, topology, the network and of course uh, of technologies. And there's a large variety of uh, emerging services and applications available. And one statement um, can be made which is that a single uh, networking or transmission technology cannot reliably fulfill all transmission or networking tasks within a, within a home. So, um, the vision of the Omega project is um, a convergent digital home network. I just catch up this, uh, this term from uh, the standard uh, activities. How can such a network look like? We have um, maybe not a represent representative home, but we, there is a home with, uh, which is equipped with multiple uh, applic um, <coughs> uh, devices, and where some um, can I use this? Yes, and where some uh, application and services um, are also mentioned. And for example, um, to reliably distribute the content which is coming from the broadband access, we could um, use a radio media network, which is based on uh, 11N, for example. 
Furthermore, we should need we could need higher rate um, connections, which can be offered by 60 gigahertz um, transmission, for example. But there's also a great need for uh, integration of uh, intelligent home appliances on light switches or whatever, and this can be done by a controller sensor network, which is um, here 802.15.4, physical layer and next layer of Zigbee, just to give an example. Um, of course, shouldn't forget about uh, power line communication, which is um, uh, a solution for a home back room. And finally, there are emerging and uh, innovative technologies such as visible light, which, has, which have already been um, uh, in the focus of Omega. And um, you see, for example, there may be a light array which provides, as you have seen it down in the showroom, which provides very high data rate to a TV set. Or, um, for example, here we have um, communication between uh, lamps or LEDs by visible light to another device. So this could be a convergent digital home, this is um, the vision. Now, um, in the beginning of Omega, there was, uh, we have made some, uh, some uh, thoughts about um, where can this convergence be achieved? How can we put everything together in the house? And here we see the um, ISO uh, OZ reference model, uh, as you know, uh, it may be the application layer, I summarized uh, um, the other layers in between the network layer and the application layer to a middleware layer. Then we have the network layer, which is uh, mostly based on IP. And we have several technologies consisting of a technology dependent physical layer and a technology dependent MAC layer. So, and in this paper here, um, the authors have um, analyzed the, dis uh, the different options for convergence. First of all, Option A would be, uh, could be convergence mechanisms um, at the network layer or above. But this, um, if you go for this option, maybe um, you won't get the best performance in the end. But with a low complexity, you can implement the convergence in software. And it would not be better than uh, um, IEEE 802.21. This is media independent handover, which has access networks as access networks in its focus, and which just defines abstraction layers for these, uh, for uh, say 3GPP, so UTS, or um, um, what's next? Um, um, LTE, yes, and WiMAX, of course, yes, thank you very much. And um, it does not actually define how a technology should be selected or how um, mobility is managed in the home. So, this leaves open all these questions. Secondly, option B could be convergence below the network layer and above the like technology dependent MAC layer. This could be somehow a compromise between complexity and performance because we are just on the border between technology dependent parts and technology independent parts within the protocol stack. Finally, of course, there's a third option which um, is a common or generic MAC layer. MAC layer for all technologies. As you know, different technologies come along with different MAC layers. And this will be, will be a very tough task to uh, harmonize all these uh, technologies. Besides, of course, the MAC layer should, um, should exploit the, um, the conditions of the physical medium. And so it has to be dedicatedly designed for a technology. So, in the Omega project, we decided to go for option B in this case. And this is a compromise between complexity and performance. So we introduced the Intermec layer as a convergent sub-layer. And the tasks of the Intermec layer are to enable the communication of a heterogeneous technology in a single home network. It should integrate several technologies, which, you will, uh, which will be done by adapters. You can see them in the picture. Um, it should enable the control and management of these technologies in order to, uh, to efficiently use them, for example, for spectrum, for availability, or energy consumption. And by just providing a single adapter for each technology which is incorporated in the internet, um, the handover or technology switching scales with a linear with n and not with n squared. 
because otherwise I would need a dedicated handover me mechanism between each pair of technologies. It enables the quality of service, um, supervision or provisioning quality of service. It should enable path selection to find a path through a natural network. It allows for network management. It's uh, definitely interesting for operators. And it should um, map services and applications coming from top of the protocol stack to um, the dedicated technologies. And it should select the best technology for a uh, special application. So by the internet we enable the interworking of um, Mac technologies, we can say. This may be some of the inspiration for the world intermac. And what the internet achieves is we have a convergence of networking technologies from below. And of course, as you know, many applications are going digital today. We have the convergence of services and applications from above. And this is just the, the, the meeting point of both convergence mechanisms is the internet. So, now I would like to explain to you how, we, how the um, network looks from an internet perspective. This is a typical network topology. It's a heterogeneous network topology, which consists of um, three um, different technologies. We have ultra-wideband, we have power line communication, or Wi-Fi, and several devices in there, which serve as bridges, for example, for certain technologies, and um, this is how it looks like. It's a really heterogeneous mesh network topology. So, if, for example, if you want to transmit a, uh, something from um, this Omega device, as I called it here, to this one. Very heterogeneous. And from an Omega perspective now, the network looks like this. It somehow harmonizes the technologies, and this is a technology independent view on the network. In order to realize this, to have all these features, I have explained, uh, explained um, before, and <coughs> to have this convergence and the view of the network, we introduced the reference architecture in another paper, and this is displayed here. This is um, looks a bit complicated on the first uh, at first glance, but uh, we will go through it now uh, in detail. First of all. Um, the reference architecture is directly introduced between layer 2 and layer 3. Layer 2 and layer 3. And the intermax can some, somehow be called layer 2.5 or 2.9, however you want it. And it consists of three functional planes. We have a data plane, which is um, responsible for high-speed high packet handling. So packet forwarding, which should enforce intelligent packet switching between technologies. There's the control plane, where the actual, um, actually the internet intelligence of the network comes in. And it provides interaction with higher layers. It uh, does the path selection, signaling, as Rolf Pema already explained. And it um, should maintain the packet forwarding table, which is situated in the data plane. I will explain this later. There's some monitoring features, and of course, it should handle failures in the network. There's a third plane, which is located behind these two planes. This is the management plane, of course. We also address the network management in our project. And this is a very short view on the um, management plane. We have um, the standard network management protocol um, enhanced by a third, by another letter, you know, FCAPS maybe, um, and we extended it for energy, and we also wanted to address this very emerging topic, which we have to consider for future system designs. And the management plane uh, can manage policies, different policies, energy-related policies, throughput-related policies, whatever you want. It is responsible for network management, or security management, and it is, it is the, the location of the management information base. 